Hello, beautiful Scorpio family, and welcome to January 2020. Wow, here we are. It's wild to think about how much we have grown, how much has shifted in a year. And January is a really potent month, I would say. January 2020, we are starting it in the midst of an eclipse season. So we had one eclipse in late December, and now we'll have our second eclipse to round out eclipse season on January 10th, a full moon lunar eclipse in Cancer, a fellow water sign. And these eclipses have been really interesting for Scorps because it's been tying into your third and ninth houses, these communicative visionary houses where you've really been refining how you use your words, how you use who you are in the world, how you connect with that, right? Um, and also another big thing that's happening for Scorp specifically is Uranus going direct in your op opposite sign of Taurus. Now Uranus being in your relational house means you're getting huge shakeups when it comes to how you relate, how you give, how you receive, how you connect, how you allow yourself to be loved, and how you allow yourself to love. And so the, there's a lot getting lit up here for you. Also a lot of the shadow work placements are still in Capricorn during January, which is your third house, communication house, south node. Um, Jupiter is now in your third house. Uh, south Saturn and Pluto are still in your third house in Capricorn. So there's a ton of energy infused in these earth signs that are pivotal to your journey. And that is causing you to ground down and really look at what you mean in life, what you really mean to say, what you really mean to do, and being really true to that. And the message that came up for me when I was feeling through your energy, my loves, was that you got to give yourself the permission to truly ask for what you want and to truly advocate for that and to then be really impeccable with your voice, with your throat chakra. Honestly, like this part of you, I think a lot of Scorpios struggle with this getting shut down, getting very tight, getting very constricted because you have so much energy going on in your crown chakras and in your root chakras and in those deeper, in the high connectedness and in the deep groundedness and in the depths in the underground. And then this point right here wants to tighten up because it's scary to put those energetic frequencies, translate them into words. But this month is going to ask you to do just that. As we move from your third house, as the sun moves through Capricorn, then moves into Aquarius on the 20th, and we have a new moon in Aquarius, and we have Mercury in Aquarius by the end of the month. And all of these energies have to do, it's a fellow fixed sign. Aquarius is a fellow fixed sign. And it has everything to do with your fourth house, your hidden internal world, and you getting comfortable with advocating within that dynamic. So I'm going to start shuffling here. Four of Pentacles. Oh man, is this is this the conversation or not about permission to move forward in life? Permission to be big, to be bold, to love on yourself enough to take a big step. That is such an indi indicative card. If you have Four of Pentacles in your reading, it means you have something that you know. Strength. Ah, Leos, they always like to show up in your reading, don't they? You have something that you are meant to act on. Hierophant and Eight of Wands. Wow. Your fixed signs are showing up in this reading. The fellow fixed signs are here. They have your back. Um, you know, the fixed signs, all of the fixed signs in January are being asked to assess how they want to put their foot on the path and to be bold enough to do just that um, and be bold enough to not do what they think others expect them to do but to do what's really in your heart. And you all, you know, you may want to do things because you feel five of wands. Perfect. I'm loving this. You feel like you're supposed to. You feel like you should. You feel like you should be these things. But yet, you know what? You're not fooling anybody. Ten of pentacles. You're not fooling anybody when you do that, Scorpios. I tell you what, when you all try to... <sighs> shove yourselves into a role or a box and you think that you are six the moon successfully uh, 
doing that and doing it for others and making it so that others think, oh man, they really love this role. They really love playing this out. You're not fooling anybody. As mysterious as you can be and as much as you can put certain emotions and hide them deep down in your labyrinth, you all are not very good at faking what really doesn't serve your soul. You revolt against that. And so it's so funny to me that you do it so often because, and the emperor. Okay, we just got Major Arcana rolling right through for your reading today, my friends, and that is powerful. And so, you know, why even bother? Honestly, if everybody is going to be able to tell that you're really not into the modality of that, is it serving anybody? Is it serving anybody not to advocate for what you mean and what you want and what you truly say? Probably not. That's the reality, right? Now, I love the cards that we have here today, my friends, uh, because, yeah, I think January is going to be a month where you sit with where you feel like you're not allowed to make that movement, make that big leap forward, and you're going to have to just choose to do it <laughs> anyway. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Classic self-help book. Really good if you're ever wanting just a basic layout, right? But Four of Pentacles. Um, in that book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, it's a really fun, easy read. She talks about how we think skepticism is the realist lens, right? We are raised to perceive skepticism as the most realistic way to view the world, to assume that things are going to go wrong, to assume things that are going to go bad, to prepare and guard ourselves against those bad things. But when you really look at a day in your life, you know, even if you have a lot of stressful circumstances, there are millions of things going right around you, right? The lights come on. Well, maybe not for everybody, but like a light switch will work. Uh, there's a functioning sidewalk outside of your house. There's, you know, there's, there's all these mechanisms that are, are functioning, right? There's a higher rate of things functioning and moving and changing through the world than there are things that are crashing and crumbling. Um, and who's to say, what is reality? Is it this pessimistic holding yourself back or is it the opening to possibility? Um, Katie Byron also, or Byron Katie also does really amazing work on this. If you check out her website, you can get a lot of resources for questioning the thoughts that hold you in this pattern that says, I am not safe to take that big step forward. And this is a great month to sit with any place where you are doing that. Because look at this. I have to tell you guys, no matter what your chart is, no matter what the energies are, when you get these three, you're activating some kind of destiny thing that you're being asked to step fully into. And there's really no other way to put it. Um, fixed sign energy, right? You're a fixed sign. Strength, which is Leo, is a fixed sign. Hierophant, which is Taurus, is a fixed sign. What are fixed signs good at doing? They are good at stepping into a role, stepping into a project and sustaining it, seeing it through. Not just initiating it, not um, being good at transitioning away from it and flitting off to something else, but making sure you see it through. And that can be the shadow side of holding on to things for too long that no longer serve you. But also, when you do activate an important part of your life, guess what? It's probably going to be impactful. It's probably going to be something you're working with for a long time to come. It's probably something that you should be paying attention to. Strength and Hierophant are really interesting too because they're slow moving, right? They're not about results overnight. They're about like digging in and committing and saying, yes, I am going to do this. I am going to tap into that higher wisdom and I am going to bring it down here in the day to day, in my little decisions and in the way I commit my energy into my life. The strength and hierophant uh, energies are all about commitment. And they're all about knowing that it's not about blasting through. It's not about immediate results, but it's about this softer listening in and tuning and refinement of that tuning in where you do more and more things that are really true for you. And you do less and less things that feel heavy or cumbersome. 
You know, this is about the quality of commitment that comes when you're committing to things that really feel good on a soul level. But these are also big energies, right? This isn't about like a little commitment. This is about really owning your power in the world. This is really owning your visibility, um, really owning what messages you want to impart to the world. And that often triggers up this holding back, this I can't give myself permission to be that visible, to be that powerful, to be that loving, to be that loved. But I'm telling you what, <laughs> the gears are already turning for you, my friends, and you're already two stations away from that platform where you think you are, where you're doing all this. So because, you know, we have these two huge major arcana energies, and then we've got the wands. Um, wands is movement through the world at its most basic level. Wands energy is like, how are you moving through the world? Eight of wands is like, the train's already left the station. You know, things are moving. Elements are coming into your life, and you will be noticing this this month that challenge you to get going. You're going to have open doors. Now, it's your choice to walk through them. Now, five of wands is also really interesting because like four of pentacles, five of wands is a place of resistance. It's a moment of contrast. If you listen to Abraham Hicks, Five of Wands is a perfect example of contrast. Um, tapping into it, tasting contrast, and that helping us clarify that vision. Clarify why it matters that we choose and we honor where it is we want to put our energy, right? Five of Wands is like having that, that same disagreement that you had maybe with uh, that coworker or that friend that you just keep, and you're like, I don't want to do that anymore. Or, you know, this contrast can also be about confronting something that's uncomfortable in you via a friendship or a partnership or a situation that then empowers you to say, yeah, I am ready to change. I am going to confront that part of myself that keeps undercutting me, that keeps saying I'm not allowed to do it. So you may be finding these are very catalytic cards. You may be finding that there are a lot of opportunities for you to, to get very clear on holding yourself back isn't doing much for you. It's not even really an option. Um, you know, you're, like I said, your destiny is kind of getting activated this month. And I know that's kind of a vague statement. You know, what is destiny? Um, what is activation? You know, because we're constantly in dialogue with the universe. It's not, it's a, it's not a one-time activation, done, now I'm just going to sit back. We're always connecting with the changing, transmuting version of our energy frequencies. We're always playing with it. We're always in communication. But there are more potent times that come up where it is about really deciding, are you going to commit to thinking good thoughts towards your destiny? Are you going to be committed to letting yourself be big and bold? Are you going to let yourself out of that little container? and move in the way you know you want to move? Are you going to say the things you mean? And that is what these last three cards are about. Whenever somebody gets Ten of Pentacles in their readings, we know we're on to something that's got big impact. Because this isn't just about what's fun in the, in the little details, which is I'm all about micro and macro lens. No middle management, right? Middle management is where we get indecisive and we use a lot of energy and we torture ourselves and we overanalyze. So micro, yeah, enjoying that cup of tea, that walk, that, that laugh with a friend. Macro lens, feeling state. What big feeling states do you want to have? And also, what do you want to build? What are you tapping into? Ten of Pentacles is amazing. There's big payoff for you showing up fully and embracing your, the bigness of who you are, embracing who you are becoming. There is a lot of energy here that is all about you stepping fully into your power here, right? And it working, it clicking in. Um, that means, though, you've got to honor two parts of yourself. Your hidden internal world, that really sensitive, beautiful, scorpionic ability to feel everything. You guys are like antennas. You walk, you are <laughs> like walking antennas, um, which can be really challenging at times, right? Because you're constantly having to process a lot of information. But that intuitive, that sensitive side, this is like very much Cancer full moon energy here with that eclipse. And your activated, focused Martian drive. You know, Mars is your other ruling planet. 
And so you have a tie to the emperor in many ways. There is a part of you that is very good at being driven. And when you put your eye on a prize, you are a hunter and you will stick to that vision and you will make sure it happens. I've seen it so many times with Scorpios where, you know, you commit to something, you open that door, you are on there and you are on the case, you are on the mission. But both of these parts of yourself need to be honored in the journey. And I think you know that. And I don't think you have to choose one or the other. They work together. They work together to give you the information you want. You know, you can get lost in dreamland over here, and I think that's really useful. And then you take decisive action here, right? That's the way these things tend to unfold. I'm going to pull a final card today from my animal totem tarot. Um, this is a really beautiful deck. I'm just starting to feel through it, but I love the symbolism of animals in nature. Um, the wisdom that they have, not being in analytical mind all the time, but being much more present, so we think, uh, present in the mechanisms of the universe helps us to tap into understanding of it. So I'm going to pull one card. Five of Cups. Capybara. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's really powerful. And actually, you know, I have this beautiful book and there's little quotes that come from, um, from each of these animals and capybaras are so beautiful. Um, I know many people like, you know, they're, they're, they're large, <laughs> they're very large and sweet. So this is what the message for five of cups in this deck is. The water is the one place I know I can be safe. In this cool flowing place, and I can allow any and all pain to wash away. In the water, I can release that which I no longer need and clear the energy for something new to take hold. In the water, I know that life continues to flow, even when death is close by. That which has been harmed can be healed. And that which has no place in the present can be washed away with the current. Oh, I just got so many full body chills for you all. Wow. I love that interpretation of Five of Cups energy. Um, you know, capybaras are very gentle natured creatures, but of course they're also prey. Of course they also um, experience loss and, and survival. Um, and, you know, being a water sign, I think trusting in your innate ability to dive into the waters and get your answers and your information there is so good. Also, this is a time of, January in general is a time of being okay with the past and what has been and letting it wash away with you um, to clear, to know that yes, what has been in the past has been in the past, but now there is a time to move forward. And now is that time. I have some New Year's wishes, uh, a toast to you all at the beginning of this new adventure. I'm so excited to be here with you on this adventure. Here is my toast to you. May you embrace your depth and let it take you down the river of life with ease and curiosity. May you give yourself permission to transform and use your voice in new ways. May you feel loved and may you allow deep connection to revolutionize your life and reveal new layers of healing and happiness and joy. May you own that you belong here. Cheers to you, beautiful Scorpios. Thank you so much for all you have given me throughout the years and all that I have learned from you. Oh, I love your reading. I love this bold, juicy energy I see for you in the coming month. Uh, of course, if you haven't joined me on Patreon yet, I would highly recommend you do. I'm going to be adding so much more. We're going to be playing and hanging out. I tell you so much more about my personal life over there, and I'm also going to be covering so many more of these potent transits that are going to be occurring. And I'm going to be doing some fun little New Year check-ins and eclipses and check-ins and extra rituals over there. So if you haven't joined me, 
you have access to so much extra information over there. If you have joined me, thank you so much. It means the world to me. You all are helping me so much to take care of myself and to also create more for you. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at Sarah Verba or on my website, sarahverba.com. Uh, I haven't opened up my 2020 calendar for one-on-one -on -one readings yet, but I will be, and there's going to be a select number. So if you want to know when my calendar opens up and you want to snag one of those spots, I would highly recommend you email me so I can get you on the notification list so that you will be aware when those sessions open. Um, and last but definitely not least, I'm wearing my beautiful friend Tiffany at Pink Loon's gorgeous jewelry. This, this crown she made specifically for me, but she has so many more beautiful crowns on her shop. They are amazing. And she's working with brass now. She's got all these visions that uh, I love to see unfold. So if you haven't checked her out yet, go check out her Etsy shop. She's one of my best friends. That's why I talk her up every month. Um, you can hopefully find me in all those places. I hope I see all of you somewhere in one of those places. I'll see you for more moon magics. And then of course, for February and on the adventure continues, I'm sending you all of my love.